Hello teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on the introduction of dimensioning. In our last lesson, we have seen the conventional representation of section and other representation of sectional view. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. A cutting plane may be offset in order to cut the object in such a manner to reveal an important detail that would not be shown if the cutting plane were continuous. Section views can replace the normal top, front, side, or other standard orthographic view. When more than one cutting plane is used, it is especially important to label them for clarity. When a cutting plane coincides with a center line, the cutting plane line takes precedence. When a cutting plane line would obscure important details, just the ends of the line outside the view and the arrows can be shown. A section lined area is always completely bounded by a visible outline. All visible lines beyond the cutting plane for the section are usually shown. Hidden lines beyond the cutting plane line are usually not shown unless they are absolutely necessary. Exceptions include threads and broken out sections. There should be no lines in the hatched area. Section lines should be parallel, uniformly spaced and in the same direction. Section lines should never be parallel or perpendicular to the object lines. Use standard section lining or hatch to show materials. In half section, either center line or a solid line is used to separate the two halves of the view. For extremely thin parts of less than 4 mm thickness, the parts should be shown in solid black or without section lines. For example, sheet metal, washer, and gaskets. Partial sections are becoming more popular. Several different partial sections created and combined to give better detail and information about specific areas of the structure. When drawing an aligned section, the angle of the cutting plane can never be greater than 89 degrees. Only the section lines on the section view of rib, web, and lug. If the cutting plane is passed flat wide through or a, a spoke if the cutting plane is passed long way through. For long objects that have to draw in a small scale to fit them on the paper, it's recommended to remove its long portion which contains no important information and draw the brick lines at the broken ends. In our today's lesson, we will discuss the meaning of dimensioning, the basic lines and symbols of dimensioning, forms of dimensioning and reading direction of figures. Before an object is built, complete information about the size and shape of the object must be available. The exact shape of the object is communicated through orthographic drawings, which are developed following standard drawing practices. After the shape of an object has been described, the size and location description of the object should be given. The process of adding size information to a drawing is known as dimensioning. The purpose of dimensioning is to provide a clear and complete description of an object. A complete set of dimensions will permit only one interpretation needed to construct the object. Dimensioning should follow the following guidelines. Accuracy Correct values must be given. Clearness Dimensions must be placed in appropriate positions. Completeness 
nothing must be left out and nothing should be duplicated. Readability. The appropriate line quality must be used for legibility. Well, students, in order to describe a size of a drawing properly, a drafter should have the basic knowledge and skill of using the various symbols, forms, and elements of dimensioning on his drawings. Next, we discuss these basic lines and symbols in some details. Lines and symbols are used on drawings to show where the dimensions apply. Professionals and certain industries have agreed upon the symbols to be used on drawings. Therefore, the lines and symbols are recognized by the people who use them. There are two basic dimension forms which are used to give distance on a drawing. These are a dimension and a knot. A dimension is the form used to give the distance between points, lines or planes or between some combination of points, lines and planes. A knot is the form used to give explanatory information along with the size numeral. Dimensions and notes must be made carefully so that they could be read easily. Capital letters are preferred on most drawings. In general, numerals should be 3 mm high and fractions should be 2.5 mm. The fraction bar should be drawn in line with the dimension, never at angle. There should also be some space between the fraction numerals and the fraction bar. Well, students, let's do some activities to check how much you have understood the other points. Discuss in pairs the function of dimensioning and the guidelines a drafter should follow during dimensioning.
Welcome back. Have you explained the use of dimensioning and the guidelines that a drafter should follow during dimensioning? Excellent. Dimensioning gives exact information on the size and position of each feature of an object for a person responsible for producing the object. Dimensions should be accurate, clear, complete and readable. Students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing great. Let's proceed to the basic lines used in dimensioning. A dimension line is a thin line that shows where a measurement begins and where it ends. It's also used to show the size of an angle. Extension lines are thin lines that extend the lines or edge of the views. It's also used to locate center points and to provide a space for dimension lines. Size extension lines are not part of the views, so they shouldn't touch the outline. Center lines are thin lines used to locate the centers of cylindrical parts, such as cylindrical holes. Well, students, Let's do some activities to check how much you understood the lesson so far. The views of an object and various dimensioning lines and symbols are given on the screen. Identify the dimension line, extension line and center line. Welcome back. Did you do well on the exercise? I'm sure you did. How many dimension line, extension line and center line did you find? 
Let's see. Well, I hope you have done great. Students, the other important dimensioning elements are arrowheads and leaders. Next, we will discuss this in some details. Arrowheads are used at the ends of a dimension line to show where the line begins and ends. They are also used at the end of a leader to show where a note or a dimension applies to a drawing. Arrowheads can be open or solid. In any drawing, arrowheads should all be the same size and shape. However, in a small space you may vary the size somewhat. Different styles are used to show the endpoints of a dimension line or a leader. Nevertheless, the arrowheads shown are preferred. Arrowheads are approximately 3 mm long and 1 mm wide. This is the length is roughly 3 times the width. Leaders are straight lines leading from a dimension value or an explanatory note to the feature on the drawing to which the note applies as shown on the screen. An arrowhead is used at the pointing end of the leader. The knot end of the leader should terminate with a short horizontal bar at the mid height of lettering and should run to the beginning or the end of the knot, never to the middle. Leaders should be drawn at an angle of 30 degrees, 45 degrees or 60 degrees. When dimensioning a circle or an arc, the leader should point toward its center. Leaders should not be crossed and drawn long. They should also not be drawn horizontally, vertically, at small angle or parallel to dimension, extension or section lines. Well, students, do you know what they say? Practice makes perfect. Here is a practice activity for you. The views of an object are given on the screen. Apply all the necessary dimension lines and symbols on the views.
Welcome back. Did you do well on the exercise? Wonderful. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Well, students, there are two methods of positioning dimension numbers on a dimension line. These are aligned and unidirectional methods. In the aligned system of dimensioning, the dimensions are placed in line with the dimension lines. Horizontal dimensions are always read from the bottom of the sheet. Vertical dimensions are read from the right-hand side of the sheet. Inclined dimensions are read in line with the inclined line. In unidirectional system of dimensioning, all the dimensions are oriented to be read from the bottom of the drawing as shown on the screen. Knots must be lettered horizontally and read from the bottom of the drawing in either system. Well, students, let's do some activities to check how much you've understood the points you've just learned. The views of an object are given on the screen. Dimension the views by applying both the aligned and unidirectional systems. Welcome back. 
Did you do well on the exercise? I'm sure you did. The solution to the activities given on the screen. Well, students, I hope you have gained a lot of concepts from today's lesson. Before we come to the end of the program, let's recap the main points. Dimensioning it, the process of defining the size, form, and location of geometric features and components on a drawing. The purpose of dimensioning is to provide a clear, and complete description of an object. Dimensioning requires the use of dimension lines, extension lines, and leader lines. All the three types of line are drawn thin so that they will not be confused with visible lines. The two methods of positioning dimension numbers on a dimension line are the aligned and unidirectional methods. In the aligned system, dimension figures are written in line with the dimension line. In the unidirectional system, however, dimension figures are written in such a way that they can be read from the bottom of the drawing. Well, students, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Keep on practicing on the methods of dimensioning. In our next lesson, we will learn about the theory of dimensions. Until then, thank you, teacher, and thank you, students. Goodbye.